A2. Hey. Ooh, yeah. I have a Christmas. Oh, yeah. Already. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good, good, Hi. good. How are you? I'm UCK. Great. Yeah, you look like Diener on the. <laughs> <laughs> or Wayne. No, yeah, or Fubar, yeah. That's yeah, Fubar. 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 Yeah. Oh, Fubar. That's a great movie. <laughs> it's a classic. <clears throat> Why don't we get What's those up? guys on here? I get know, right? Fubar guys. I think we've tried. Um, mm. I see him. I follow Diener on uh, Instagram or something. So maybe I'll try and reach out. That's hilarious. That'd be hilarious. That would be fun. Yeah. I don't know if that, that's that would a be character. Really awesome. it, it's a character he plays, but we all knew that guy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Not just... Not just in Alberta. I think they're supposed to be from Calgary or something like that. But no, I knew yeah. that dude in Saskatchewan and everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. I'm looking at the at the um, at the comments. comments. We're back. Oh, yeah, hey, we, we had, had a couple of weeks off, right? Back. Yeah, we had a couple we weeks. Did, that was what, kind of two uh, or three weeks, something like that, right? Because was it three? Was it two or three? Two. I'm not sure. Yeah, Maybe three. Who was the last guest? I'm with. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of makes it special, I suppose, when we kind of kind of float in and out here with with this kind of stuff so what have you guys been doing fitz and yeah. i were both away and uh but we, it's just me and fitz we went on a cruise to honduras and belize <laughs> together it's uh... <laughs> tell us about it with these guys How with you, these guys, guys. yeah with those rad. guys wow you've got the actual asylum t-shirt where'd, that, where'd you get that etsy etsy has everything guys mm. all this yeah. ain't real but i'm i'm glad to have it it's cool the Kiss Cruise was fun. It was, uh, uh, we were just talking about it earlier. It was, um, so Kiss plays, Kiss plays twice in full makeup. They play three times technically because they also play um, a sail away show, just kind of like, it used to be acoustic, but this time it was a full electric show, but it's just kind of like way more casual and people shout out requests and stuff like that. And then they did, we had Night Ranger, Night Ranger played, um, yeah. Queensryche. Black and Blue, which was Tommy Thayer's old band, who actually I was a big fan of when, when we were kids. And then a lot of younger bands, uh, Liliac, um, Tuck Smith uh, and his band. The Talisman, our friends from Dal uh, Nashville who play with Ace Fraley, and they play, used to play with Gene Simmons and all this kind of guys. So it was a lot of fun. It's really good to hang with people. Craig Gass, our friend, was uh, who we should have on here, by the way. We should have we on should here. Have um, you know, from the Howard Stern show and all that kind of stuff. Really... Uh, Really fun. Sebastian Bach was supposed to be there. He had some sort of, I believe it was a passport issue and didn't show up. So his band, we had jam session uh, uh, sets for the when they would pl were supposed to play. So that was kind of uh, kind of fun. Who is Queens for, right now? Basically, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Wilson, no. Michael Wilson, and, and and Eddie Jackson are the only two guys. Okay. Uh, Scott Rockenfeld just left a few years ago, didn't he? The drummer. I don't know. Yeah, and no, Jeff Tate drummer. has his own. Jeff Tate has his own version. Is that how it he is? does? Yeah, it's just called Jeff Tate, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. He had kind of a super group <laughs> for a minute there, didn't he? Fitz, he had like Rudy Sarzo and guys like that mm -hmm. in his band. Yeah, it's the classic. It's like you know, some of our favorite bands are split in two, and a singer goes off and has his band, and but the uh, the Queens Rake that we saw, they were great. You know, like yeah, that, Todd Latour that, on vocals is awesome. He's amazing. Yeah, he's really a great singer. And their new drummer, Casey, is really awesome great too. Dude. Yeah. yeah. You'd like him, Shane. Yeah, he's a great drummer. They, they sounded play, amazing. Do yeah. they play they, like they? a lot of mind crime stuff or new oh, yeah. stuff or just Everything. across the board? That's all so across awesome. The board. Yeah. I love those mm -hmm. guys. Everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, was a that big... dude could, he sings all that stuff legit. So really? I haven't seen Jeff do it solo, but I, I'm sure he's amazing too. But. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was fun. Night Ranger was great. Night Ranger is always great. They're you know really great. seasoned professionals. Those guys. Yeah. Um, Kiss was I, awesome. We had a blast with those guys. I loved your post, Todd, with Gene. You guys are doing Beatles songs, and Gene Simmons is hanging out. <laughs> that was so <laughs> rad. Well, we were just kind of already jamming, so, noodling around together, and then Gene just walks in, and he's kind of like ho down yeah. to the tunes. And Fitz is pretty good at just kind of like getting them going. Hey, play play a Beatles song. Okay, we just start playing. He just immediately like comes over, like, "Hey!" <laughs> uh, it was so so paint, cool. paint a picture of what a uh, day on the Kiss Cruise is like. Like, you get up and you do you go and hang with everybody? Do you eat at the at the buffet with everybody, or what? What happens? Was there Certainly a buffet? Can. I don't know. There mm -hmm. is a buffet. There is an artist lounge where we often sort of just kind of duck in and out of. That's got food and coffee and that kind of stuff. But there's a buffet that's that's the hard part is not eating. 
It's just like it's constantly I know food everywhere at any time. And, uh, you know, it's it's you get it's the funniest thing about it is that every once in a while you're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we get to go to a kiss concert tonight, you know, out of nowhere. And, <laughs> and we can just randomly go see Night Ranger and, you know, Queensryche or whoever. There's a it's schedule pretty, every day, though, right? Like yeah. we wake up and we kind of go, oh, we're going to go see Black and Blue at two and, and you know, Queensryche at six. And then we and play, have, but we don't play every day. So, you know. And the funniest I mean, thing is that there's things like Paul Stanley's cooking lessons and stuff like that. Q&A's, <laughs> drum off, guitar yeah, riff Q&A's, contest. Yeah, Tommy's hosting a guitar thing and uh, Paul Stanley's reading bedtime stories tonight. You're like, what is going on here? It's just yeah. totally surreal. Uh, but as a fan, they had like a newlywed game. They had a family food game, a feud game. There you go. Don was there. Cruise was in a red. Yeah, it was a red place. Yeah. Oh, Don. It was Don pretty Don. full too. You know, for yeah. a cruise that we've that would have been our fourth cruise, Todd. Right. <clears throat> it's fourth together. One, yeah. Yep. So of course, last year was not happening. But you know, we did a lot of testing. We did PCR tests before and antigen mm-hmm. tests. So you know, we felt like pretty comfortably tested before we got on the on the yeah. cruise and. Yeah. and vaccinations, et cetera. But, you know, just getting on the boat and, ha- and having a bunch of people that really were like, oh, thank, thank God, thank you guys for, you know, coming to play. So it was, you know, it was about a awesome. 70, it was about a 70% capacity than what it mm-hmm. normally is. So it was actually fairly comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't really notice too much of a difference. Did you, Fitz? I, I don't remember it being kind of like, the people kept saying it was great because in, you know, I think for the, for the, the standard, uh, you know, the fans that would just come on the boat, they, they noticed a difference as far mm-hmm. as like, accessibility to things but m- definitely more north americans because i don't think all of yeah. europe could come in south america right no like, and you noticed what? that did you notice like um yeah. like mike brun and those guys were commenting on how you know we, when when kiss plays uh detroit rock city the guitar solo you know you hear all the south americans la 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 <laughs> when, oh, yeah. when they're not there it's just kind of a guitar solo you know it's like but the yeah. South Americans will sing the, you know, they'll sing guitar solos and stuff. It's whole next That's level. awesome. I think, yeah. I think as of yesterday, isn't there some thing now where internationals open? I think November sure. 8th was like, uh, yeah, Canada yes. and USA Back, and yeah, I think none. Europe and whatnot. So I think people are able to travel. Yeah. Right. I, think I think today actually in the ninth or something, right? Yeah. UK yeah. and yeah. all that. Italy. Yeah. Yep. Come on We're down, everybody. Back. So mm-hmm. what were you guys doing down. during all? What were you guys doing, the two of you, while we were kiss cruising? I was oh. probably recording a bunch of drum tracks in here. Mm. That's good. <laughs> That's kind of all I've been doing lately. Is That's important. A lot of that. <clears throat> and, uh, and I was yeah. dusting off the cobwebs for the Shania residency that's coming up. Well, that's we're exciting. In a couple of weeks. I yeah, we'll see so you in I, Vegas, Corey. Hey, no pressure, but I have yes. a party of about twenty-five people that I need tickets for. So, <laughs> <laughs> opening night, <laughs> opening night, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy. Why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? That's exciting. For so, sure. who's all in the band yeah. this time? Is it is it Gooch, Froze? Our our last guest is is playing bass, Derek Frank. Derek mm-hmm. Frank and right. yep, Josh Joshua Ray Gooch, yeah, is other guitar player. Mm-hmm. And uh, Elijah Wood, uh, who we call Frodes, uh, because of Frodo, get yeah. it? Lord of the Not Rings, the actor, Elijah Wood. The drummer. Yeah, that's right, the drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Frodes playing drums, and we have Charlotte Gibson on oh, back of vocals. Great. Mm-hmm. She, in fact, I'm going to get her on Tuk Talk because she's saying with um, with uh, Eric Clapton Everybody. and yeah. Stevie Wonder. So yeah, wow. she would have some amazing stories. She would. Cool. Yeah. Um, She's great. So, yeah. Um, and then um, who am I missing? Keyboards? I think that's it. Oh, uh, 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 Chandra Maybelline. 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 Yeah. She's played Maybe fiddle and uh, keys. Yeah. Maybelline. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's it. And then we got a bunch of dancers, a bunch of lights and stage props and big shoe. Really big so shoe. when you're, you're, you're coming to Vegas, when, Corey? End yeah. of the month to rehearse here. Yeah, you're rehearsing like December in LA. 1st, I think. Yeah, December or a couple days. Oh, was it? Maybe the last last day of November. What's that? And is mm-hmm. that is that um, do you rehearse in the theater? Like, is that you get set up and, and yeah. rehearse in there? Okay. That's right. Yeah. Very well, cool. Well, you know, we got to do all the stage blocking again. Remember what we did because it's been like two years since we played the show. Oh, my God. I guess so, so. Um, you know, and it's a very, very carefully choreographed show where 
the techs have to be in certain places to hand you your guitar. Like it might not right. be at your home base because there is no home base for everybody. We we cross stage. It's just like some guys are up on this cube and some guys are down the front of the, you know, and we just we're all wow. over the place. So the uh, yep. the guitar techs have to know the show as much as like they're they're moving around as much as we are. So weird. And if wow. if they're not there at a cue, you won't get your guitar. Right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So we have to rehearse all that once again and get used to that. Who's going to walk her down the stairs when she walks down the stairs, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. There's tons of ads for you guys all around town. I just drove by oh, planet Hollywood. The, the mm -hmm. massive Shania sign is huge it's just everywhere. One, yeah. So, it's you know, people one. are really ready for these residencies back. A hundred percent. That's awesome. Well, come on down. Uh, Jimmy D's guitar lessons and rock talk says, Corey, is that why you're not playing with Tuke in Winnipeg? No, it's because I freaking hate these guys and I'll do anything to get it. <laughs> and he's had enough. But only on that one uh, day. No. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely why I can't do yeah, the show. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's Shania Ng. So our friend yep. Zach's gonna get up and play. So that's gonna be fun. So I'll miss everybody up in uh yeah, but Zach Throne, he, he he's gonna sub for me. He's very capable and um you, you know, obviously he was just with you guys on the Kiss Cruise. Yeah. He's yeah, he plays bass talents. on that. Yeah, he plays bass on that. Yeah. He plays guitar on this. So, yeah, he's, yeah, he's one of our old time for you, friends, Corey. Yeah. One time too, when you were back with Shania, 2019. That's I right. think you were you were in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I think he's done a couple of other two shows, hasn't he? He did. He played mm -hmm. bass once or twice too. So yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think exactly. Edmonton, we were, a couple of shows in Edmonton, right? Wasn't it the CFL game yeah. and then the Blues Alley we were, gig. We were trying to play Winnipeg sooner, so Corey could be um you know because mm -hmm. this this past weekend we were actually working on it but somehow todd and i were like but we have to go to the rolling stones no i'm just kidding but we did <laughs> go to, todd and i went to the rolling stones this weekend that was pretty epic we did. oh yeah, we did. yeah. Was that, that's yeah. pretty cool yeah it was awesome yeah we it was actually really there. great like i was it was sounded better than i expected usually in a large like i remember seeing shows at dc place in vancouver and they always sounded crazy you know like that big expansive thing but Sounded really good in that room. I was kind of surprised. Hmm. You know, I kind of went in there with that expectation. Oh, this will be nuts, but it sounded really good. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. like 80 year old guys, 78 year old Mick Jaggers running like a football field length of a stage. And I'm like, I think I would be winded doing that, you know, now at like several, at a few years younger than him. How long is the show? About two hours. Couple. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah a couple hours. Yeah. Full blown. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot singing for yeah. two hours. Yeah. He's, I think the general consensus is, though, when you see Mick Jagger, there's no complaints from anybody. Like, there's no excuses. Anybody on planet Earth that at 80 years old, I know what my, my you know, my wonderful parents are doing today, and I know that Mick Jagger is out somewhere walking and running around, you know, on his day off or whatever. It's like, yeah, it, if you follow him on Instagram, like even in Vegas, he went around to like Fremont Street, went and got a bunch of pictures around town, just like <laughs> That's you, so could tell, cool. you could tell he hopped Good in the cram. car and, and they just drove him around and got some pictures. But it's yeah. like he seems to be doing that everywhere. <laughs> still awesome. Um, yeah. He look, he looks great still too. It's like it does. Yeah, he looks the he same as he did the, thirty years ago. It's ridiculous. probably wears the same size pants. You know, it's just like yeah, yeah. I probably will not be. <laughs> <laughs> we should get our guest on. We've been yeah. yeah let's do it. Okay, we got a really. Really good shoe today. A really big shoe. Uh, do you want to bring uh, bring in our guest? Well, I can bring in our Mr. guest. Like, you, know, you know, the lead singer for this band, uh, when I was a kid, I was about 14, 15 years old. I ran down 2nd Avenue. Um, uh, they were playing at the A4 in Saskatoon. And I ran down 2nd Avenue with the guitar player in my band, or just a couple of kids, really, and uh, got him to sign. I think for some reason I just happened to have, like, the queen city kids first album on me or something like that and uh you know so they're they're a massive deal to us as saskatchewan guys and prairie guys the queen city kids um queen city for those that don't know regina saskatchewan was named after uh it, it's after a queen of some sort so uh they called themselves and they call regina the queen city so these guys were the queen city kids and uh if you have paid attention to our records the first one we cover dance the second one we cover down again. So we would cover all both of their albums in entirety, which we might want to talk talk about that and see see if that yep. if you'll let us. But um we yep. love this guy. He's one of the all time great guitar players in Canadian history and in our opinion in rock and roll history. Um and a wonderful, wonderful man. And we got to hang out with him last time. We were just up in Saskatchewan uh, about a month ago, I guess now. 
Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. from the Queen City Kids, Kevin, California, Ben. Yeah. Woohoo. Ah. Hey, boys. Hi. Must be, hey. Must hey. Be so bored listening to that nonsense. He's like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That, that, that was that was awesome. I I love the uh, I love the Rolling Stone story and uh, like I mean, you guys are. Uh, uh, I'm living in Regina. You guys living in uh, in the big world. So uh, <laughs> it's 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 nice. I mean, I used to go to Vegas like uh, at least once a year, but uh, of course nobody's gone anywhere for a few years. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy, I but I, I'm just absolutely tickled pink to be on your show. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, you guys are fantastic. The show was great. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm tickled. Let's Keep rock. We're, Keep let's going. rock. Keep going. Have you. We, we're so excited <laughs> to have you with the, uh, I mean, I, I want to avoid getting into guitar nerd talk, but there's something about your tone that to this day, you know, it wasn't, I, it wasn't that long ago. I just cranked up the first album again and just carrying the stick, dan, 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 simple dan, dan, single dan, line dan. riff like that. I'm like, man, this tone is, is that, was that a BC Rich on that recording? Or what was that? Um, you know what? Uh, I believe it was. I believe it was the BC Rich. I, I did a bunch of different things in the beginning. I did, I, I buy amp two Marshalls together. Uh, oh. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, I uh, the guitar the the uh, I, I I did the first album I I think on uh, my Les Paul recording, which I no oh. longer have, and a Les Paul recording has a lower output, and so you have to really get that you have to get those tubes red hot, man, to get it mm -hmm. going right. Is that uh, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I I always went straight, big cable, uh, never used a cordless. Uh, or a wireless, uh, because uh, you always got more juice and more jam out of it that way. Although I don't, I don't know if you could still do that today, because uh, watching you guys fly around the stage, uh, no amps, no this, no that. I, 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 it's just a whole new world, man. I love it. It's fantastic. Well, is this it your is, Gibson here? That is my is that Gibson, Gibson? Les Paul recording. Yes, oh, sir. Wow. Oh. Cool. I always like those recording models. Are the weird? Are they the weird slanted pickups on them and stuff? Yeah, weird slanted covered pickups. Absolutely. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. I, I must have been looking at a girl there because I was smiling. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know where you guys are getting these pictures from, but uh, good. You're either looking at a, You're either looking at a girl or a good paycheck. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. We all know that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> we all know uh, that didn't happen. How yeah, old were you here? How old? You look like you're uh, like 10. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. well, no, I probably am uh, probably probably 19 or 20. Yeah, probably. Probably okay. 19 or 20, yeah, something like that. I mean, the band actually broke up when I was, when we were 25 and 26. So Are that you serious? Is, yeah, wow. yeah, we actually broke up. Well, our man, we were, you know, Street Art went bankrupt. Actually, I should, probably shouldn't even get into any of this, but no, you should. Street is, Street Art, yes, you know, we had we, we had Gary Stratacek as a manager, uh, mm. so, along with Street Art and along with Kick Axe and and a few others that he had, and and uh, I, I was there when the Street Art guys were having their furniture taken away because they all had leased apartments and leased furniture. And and uh, they're you know stereos and they made it look like they were doing really well, but uh, the, the uh, Stratacek just screwed everything up. He just screwed right, everything right. up. So so we got out. We got out because we thought you know we we thought maybe if we get out and get out of our contract, then maybe we could uh, go back out again. And but we had never ever done anything else uh, other than play up until we were like 25, 26 years old. That's all we ever did. None of us ever had a job. I mean, it was just, we never had places to live. We just lived in hotels uh, where we played because we played 52 weeks a year. And then when we decided that we were going to break up and get away from Stratichuk, uh, the situation was, wow, what, what is this? What are you know, like living and hanging your clothes up in a closet? And, <laughs> and, 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 and like, and, and what happened was, is we kind of drifted. We kind of drifted apart and, and uh, never really, it never really happened. And then we did a reunion tour in 86, mm -hmm. uh, doing a, a show in Winnipeg at the Rendezvous. 
and it was a social that we were raising money for Alex's wedding. And, oh, uh, wow. and, and it was standing room only. And we went, well, oh, these guys still remember us? Like what, what the hell? So anyway, mm-hmm. and then we've been doing reunion tours ever since. That's great. So how That's long fantastic. was the break between the breakup and that reu- initial reunion show? How long were you guys apart? Uh, about three and a half years. Yeah, that's a substantial amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it Kevin, was. So, but before that, I just go back. Like you guys were, when did you play together first? Like it was someone's basement, right? Like you were little kids. We, uh, I was eleven. I think the other guys were twelve. We formed December. Wow. We formed De- December twenty first, nineteen sixty nine. Whoa! Uh, I'm sure you guys have a picture of that stupid basement. <laughs> sure, Corey probably. <laughs> well, yeah. I saw something earlier. On. But but any, there oh, yeah, it is. It is. And, oh, you, rules. and you'll notice there's another man in the uh, in the uh, on the uh, on the far right there. His name was Rocky Stewart. Uh, he he uh, he didn't really uh, know how to play. Uh, not that any of us knew how to play, but he didn't really know how to play, but we just liked him. So he was in the band. Uh, uh, God, God rest his soul. He just passed away from oh, cancer. Oh, sorry oh, uh, no. uh, my, yeah. my favorite part is the full Saskatchewan ski lodge basement setup. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. That was, that was the drummer. That was Jeff Germain's house. Yeah. Love it. Now, Love. He, lo- now he looks, he looks eight. I know. Yeah. He's young. <laughs> Holy smokes. And uh, where is this? Is this in Regina or in this, this is in Regina? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's a high rolling basement. Oh you man, know? I'm telling Come you. On. And he got a that kit. wood paneling. This guitar, that guitar I'm playing, I borrowed from uh, my brother in law who taught me three chords over the summer. And Perfect. so I, I came in after that uh ten or eleven uh years old summer and I thought I had the cat by the tail you know what i'm saying i knew three chords and uh <laughs> jeff and john jeff and john were were holding auditions because they wanted to form a band jeff was in the police boys band uh john was a john's a great musician he he, yeah. he played uh he played bagpipes and flute and and uh all kinds of different things now he's a, he's a great u- ukulele player as well wow. uh but but anyway uh half that shit you see in that picture is kind of semi borrowed uh but we we would have to learn songs off the radio right so we would tape them on a little tape cassette i mean because and, and the only the only saving grace would be learning the lyrics would be if if it was in the jacket right right uh, of, yeah. of the album but if we couldn't afford to buy the record then we would just do it off the off the uh radio and we'd put it on a cassette tape and then you just go rewind rewind and go <laughs> over and over and right oh up. man it's a whole different world <laughs> back then man I love Chowacki in like mini Jagger mode here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? He was Alex and I were best friends, still our best friends. And uh he was my best friend at the time. And I was kind of a we used to have music classes in school and I was a bit of a ham. And so they asked me if I would come out and audition for the band. Of course, uh at that age your best friend goes with you everywhere you go. Of course, yeah. And yeah. Mm-hmm. so then they after after uh, I tried a couple, then Alex tried a couple. Oh, yeah, you're in the band. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the rest. I, I think our first gig was when we were 13, maybe. Oh wow! And Todd and we, Player says Salt Creek Revival. What does he mean by that? Salt Creek Revival. Todd uh, Player is from. Is that a band Todd, name or a show? Todd, Todd, no, Todd Player is a great is a, a great friend of mine too. He's a, a great drummer that lives in mm-hmm. Regina uh, and played in a bunch of different bands. Uh, but I don't know what that is. That could so be what, ba- what band name more. is that? What did you guys call yourself right there in the photo? Or was there no name yet? Oh was that Cambridge? No, no, Cambridge not, not- came later. We were called okay. we were called we were called the VIPs. Right. Uh, right. And we were called the VIPs when we won we won second place. There was a, a choir, a Catholic choir named the Sweet Adelines, and we went against them in a in a big showdown uh, uh, band contest at the Center of the Arts, and and I got to tell you, we uh, I don't know if anybody's got a picture, but we were set up on a four by eight riser, 
the whole band was on a four by eight riser and the Adelines played and we came out, they rolled us out. They rolled us out on this four by eight. I'm talking the drums, the amps, everything. And, and, and we played and we got second place and we got a little trophy and yeah. nobody knows where the trophy is. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's what amazing. I, what, I, what What's so amazing though, is it's the exact same band when you guys were like eight yeah, I know. you know that it's that is still band. exists to this day. That's right. It, That's it's right. a commendable thing that there's no version of the band that went out with anybody else. You know what I mean? Well, it's you know, you, been... you guys were just talking about how you know bands split, and the singer goes and starts that band, and goes and does that band, and you know, you know, uh, we we never did that. We just it was no? always us. And and Mike Martin, our sound man, absolutely uh, has been with us the whole time as well. Uh, there was a, a short time that he was in school and. And he didn't do any of our gigs, but he was he was a fifth member of the band and uh, yeah. was a great was a great sound man and and uh, certainly helped my guitar sound uh, out front for sure in a big way. There's mm. something to be said about those those Prairie Crew guys. Fitz and I talk about this all the time. Like I was just in, at the Stones concert and we were talking. Like a bunch of my friends were there. Yeah, uh, Saskatchewan guys that work in in large country festivals and stuff like that now and all those guys because the same as as the bands. Doing sound and lights fifty-two weeks a year, yes, makes you a pretty damn good, makes pretty damn good at your job, you know. So a lot yeah. of these guys went on to own major companies, you know what I mean? Yeah, D Dean Roney did sound for us for a long time too, and and wow. uh, he he's did our neighbor, Kevin. He's I our neighbor know. down here. I know, I know, I can't wait. And uh, what's his uh, company called? Um, Solo Tech. Solo Tech. Yeah, that's yeah, a right. Canadian, Tech, yeah. Canadian company. He does. Uh, yeah. He does buble, bubbly. Mm. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, but know. his his company does a lot of big shows. Absolutely, they and, do. Uh, yeah. yeah, and he's from Saskatoon originally. So yeah, and, he, he, and when I played with Streetheart, uh, when I played with Kenny in '89, I played with him for a year. Uh, oh. uh, Dean was our uh, Dean was our sound man. Wow, huh. yeah, what was yeah, that yeah. like? I would love to have seen that. I would love to have seen you uh, playing guitar for it, that. It, it, it was absolutely fabulous, and it was just what I needed because I was floundering and didn't really know what I was doing. I was. Uh, I was doing IOTC calls for stage calls, and uh, he asked me if I would go out, and uh, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, we played for a year, and then uh, Kenny's gone through a lot of people. Yeah, you know, he, he went through Brent a lot Fitz. of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and you know what? You know what? I I gotta say, God rest his soul. But the great thing about Kenny, I mean, what a showman, man! He was he was Always. number one. He was number Always. one. Mm -hmm. uh and and the thing about him was is he just kept that whole thing going till he died like honest to god it. like that 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 right right there in itself is a huge feat it you really is it really you know is. when yeah. i saw the stones i thought of as i'm watching them yeah you know it re it reminded me how when i grew up and todd you know we've talked about this when a lot of our heroes like yourself kevin and a lot of the, the great canadian bands that we loved the stones Queen City Kids, Streetheart, it was all the same to us. We didn't know any different. Like, that wow. was yeah. a big deal. So Kenny was Mick Jagger to me, always yeah, to this yeah. day. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah man. Oh, yeah. And I watched the Stones, and I go, you know, I watched Kenny a million times and played, you know, on the stage with him, but he was a Mick Jagger right to the end, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, he truly was. Example. He truly was. Uh, speaking yeah. of the Stones, in 1970. I don't know what year it was. I think it might have been 76, might have been 77. You know, when uh, uh, when Richards got busted at the border or whatever. And in they Toronto. In yeah. Toronto. And they yeah. made him do a show. Do you remember that? Yeah. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, it was the El Macomo. But then they did another show uh, with a 5,000 seat theater. And we happened to have the day off. And we were playing in Toronto. And we got to see that show. And it was cool. it, it wasn't supposed to be nobody knew if Mick Jagger was going to be there. But it hmm. was uh, um, uh, so Keith came out and he, you know, he started the whole thing. And wow. and uh, it, it was, you know, doing his his singing. I, I, I love his singing. By the yeah, way. Do, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And then hmm. and then of it course, sounds like that's a show that was uh, uh, like like part of his his that, court that, deal or whatever that, like it sounds like that's the yeah. judge the judge uh yeah. made him do that and they had to give all the money to charity or whatever yeah. it was yeah. but that's yeah. exactly what it was but to see the stones in a five thousand seat hall was it was fantastic right and and keith wow. ended up or not keith but uh mick mick came out after a few songs and then of course it was a rolling stone show 
Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget that one. That was fantastic. Absolutely, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. People kind of forget there was a period there where Keith got busted at the border in Canada with dubious products. Oh yeah, and uh, and was like borderline in real trouble. In fact, I think that's what eventually he got him sober. I think was well, at least sober from heroin. I think was the, right, uh, the big right. thing. Right. Is there, so he, uh, yeah, he he definitely got sober after that. I is, is he still sober? I don't think he's. He's probably what they call Hollywood sober. Right. <laughs> he's Hollywood. not like he not doing do hard drugs. Anymore. Yeah, right. like not doing right. hard drugs, but right. probably. I'm sure he enjoys a cocktail. I don't know if he still enjoys a cocktail. But. Yeah. Well, and I and then when when they played in Regina, they did two shows in Regina in uh, was it '08 or was it '07 mm -hmm. or something like that? And it was at Taylor Field. Uh, My of course, parents went uh, to that show. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was two shows, and of course, I I was in the film industry at that time, which I still am, and I had a bunch of trailers, and so my star trailers were backstage. So my my uh, my young daughter, sorry, oh set, yeah, it was my young daughter uh, got to meet all those guys, and it was no it was pretty freaking cool. And not That's only that, cool. not only that. Uh, uh, oh shit, I don't have that guitar here, but. Uh, uh, Keith and uh, Ronnie Woods signed the back of my BC Rich. Wow. No oh, way! Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, Wait I, a minute. I, you don't have the BC Rich with you? Uh, it's not in this building at the moment. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> hey, now you'll have to have me back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you For go. Guitar day <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah, guitar day. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I noticed you got quite a few behind you there, uh, Todd. Yeah, I hope the owners. I hope the owners don't come home and kick me out. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, my plan is to have my guitars. I want to. I want to get them all uh, hanging up, but I'm so freaked out about humidity and everything else. I, I'm, I'm trying to build a room. Try being in the desert. It's just oh, the worst. It's just like I, constantly kind of trying to re like fix these guys up, but it's it's yeah. a thing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, so how do you, have, do you still have this guitar? Do you oh, still have go. this guitar? Oh wow! I, I do not. I traded it. I traded that guitar in at the music box, which which became the Long and oh, McQuaid. Yeah. Uh, I traded it in on my uh, Les Paul recording. I bought my uh -huh. first uh, my first electric guitar and amp at the music box in Regina, the original location or wherever it was. You know. Oh, uh, you guys! I got to tell you a story about that picture. Uh, if you okay. notice, if you notice, everybody had plaid pants on. Except mm -hmm. for me, Except you. And, <laughs> and I got into shit for that uh, <laughs> for some reason. And, and 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 I don't know if you noticed the vest I'm wearing, but God, it's got elephants on it. Where the hell was my brain at? <laughs> I, I think and the boat, the bow ties are fantastic. The, the bow ties are like how big? How big of a bow tie could you get? <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. I love it. So you guys take me down every lane. Is that an actual <laughs> Fender Tele? Yeah, that's a that's a real Fender logo. Yeah, on there. Yeah. yeah, it's a real Fender. You know what, guys? You know what? Hang on. Can you can you make that picture bigger? Because uh, I try. believe that is that is the picture, or, or sorry, go back from it because I believe oh. that the picture was from the center of the art Sweet Adelines on that oh. four by eight. Oh wow! Oh, wow. oh yeah, sure, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there. That's... That was. That was the gig at the Center of the Arts when the Sweet Adelines, which is a 60s <laughs> woman choir, beat us. Uh, I, I don't know what the hell we were doing there anyway, but <laughs> whatever. Is that bass so that Donnelly's playing is cool. Yeah, I was going to say, are you playing? Is that a Fender uh, basement? It's a, it's a Fender twin, I think. No, it's oh. not a twin because that's it. No, I don't even know what that is because I don't have it anymore. It, Corey? Zoom in on that. Uh, yeah, I was trying to zoom in on it, but I, you can't really see. I, yeah, but yeah, uh, like, so well, I bet you that rig sounded amazing though. And, and yeah, Alex, Alex had Alex had a super reverb combo there, I think. And Johnny was playing. It's not we couldn't even get his amp on the stage. Uh, he was playing a GBX. Oh wow! Oh, wow. I like uh, that, Canadian flag on the kick drum head and on Alex's guitar. Ah, and that's, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a badass drum set too. That's an old seventies or maybe sixties Ludwig. 60s yeah. Ludwig. Absolutely. That'd be Probably worth a fortune 60s. now, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you doing City Kids? There. Are you Cambridge? What? In the photo. Uh, oh, that what we would have been the VIPs. The VIPs. Okay, wow. so this yeah. is way early on. Okay. Yeah. I like the, pe on. the pedal that's wrapped up here on the yeah. on the yeah. app. Well, the, they great. took this picture. <laughs> they, they took this picture 
<laughs> before they wheeled us out, and then we had oh. to, you know, get the pedals out, and uh, yeah. I didn't even know how to use a pedal, boys. <laughs> so you would have had all the mic stands then also on that stage. Yeah. Oh, it, it just it pedals just not mic stands and. Oh yeah. Well, this is yeah. this is how they change. You know how they you know how you do the chains over in between in between bands and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, that's how they did it back then, right? It's that's like smart. Let's just Man, get don't... these guys on this four by eight because that's all the labor <laughs> we have to move it. That's like smaller than most bands' drum risers. Like, there's yeah. no room for you guys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but then fast forward a couple of years. Oh, there we yeah. go. Oh Jesus, I was looks like I was balding then, huh? <laughs> uh, What's... Now this this is, I believe this is in the uh, uh, the bank building in uh, Winnipeg. Oh right, oh, uh, the, the, the Mitchell album? the the Mitchell Cobb building, which is which is now torn down. It's it's the uh, it's it's condos and it's the uh, what's that German hotel? The Alt. The Alt? Uh, the Alt the Alt Hotel there now, but you know what they I did? I always wondered what that was. Okay, so the, is that not the facade beside it or something, Kevin? Sorry to... Yeah, the, the, the actual facade of, of the uh, of the bank uh, is right at the very front of the condo, and they kept that. It was, uh, yeah, we and we, we stayed in a... That's the first time we stayed in a really nice hotel because we had we had record money, and uh, yeah, yeah. We, we went at it. I don't know how many well, hours a day. People. Is that is that the there's producer on the left? The yeah, uh, on the that's left? that's Rob Freeman. Yeah, yeah, and he okay. he had just finished doing the Go Go's, which were just uh, inducted, by the way. That's right. Wow. That's right. They were. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, this was the first album. Uh, no, this would have been the second album because Black Box. Black the Box. first the first album was done at the. Uh, uh, oh, Brent, what's this, Fitzy? What's the studio that they used to have? Century uh, Twenty One. Century Twenty One. That's where we did the first one. Uh, and we yeah. had and we had Gene Martinick as our producer on that one, and he had done Bruce Coburn or something. There wasn't oh, really. Uh, there, there, uh, it was uh, some of the guys or these these guys that we had were really. Uh, I don't think they were the right people for us. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, uh, what Gene what we Martinick, did. Ralph Watts. That's right, Ralph Watts. That's right. Gary Gray. Gary Gray, uh, mixing engineer Gary Gray. I'm just looking at your credits on the back. Okay, uh, okay, right here. Good on you, buddy. Good on you. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, like, uh, oh, and that was the that was the picture on the back of the first album, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's I a great shot. So much, I was like, wow, these guys look so cool. Yeah, yeah that was so cool. after the first record. They gave us they gave us a thousand dollars each to go buy clothes. Uh, yeah. and, and, and that's, so you went to and, Leather Ranch. And we went to Leather Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what can I tell you, buddy? Oh, and, the leather Ranch. Yeah, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never forget it because when we, we – uh, I, I think we – I think we – I don't even think we got dressed. Uh, I think we got dressed at the hotel and walked over to where we were doing this photo shoot, and there was all kinds of – in Toronto, where all kinds of freaks following us in 1970, sure, yeah. whatever it was, or 1980, and oh my God, I went, what have we done? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a big budget. Dude, look, clothes. Hey, <laughs> yeah, there's the the bank building. The facade exists in Winnipeg. That's right. That's what? right. You got where? it. You're it's gonna have to wait guys. Hang, a full screen for that. hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. I'll put you out front here. I'm glad okay, you guys so are doing there's this the bank money. building. So oh, it yeah. still exists in a facade, and beside it is the Alt Hotel. It's right across from the hockey oh, arena. Yeah, on it's from MTS. Yeah, that's right. So there Do you go, they, guys. Right. I, I don't know if they still call it MTS. Is it something else now? It's Canada Life Center. Oh, Canada Life Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old, uh, good old Neil Don or Kevin Donnelly in there. Yeah, good that's man. right. Man. Good man. Hey, mm -hmm. speaking, I uh, speaking of pictures. From yep. the MTS. Hang on. This, I don't know if you guys can see this. I don't know if I have enough light on it, but I'll try and not get shadows. But this is all pictures from 2015 Grey Cup. Oh, uh, right. With Loverboy. No way. Wow. Lover, Loverboy Lover Boy in 5440. Wow. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's the so, most, most Canadian lineup I've ever heard of. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, man. I love it. Go, yeah, go love to it. the back behind you. We need to start looking at so there. 
the Cambridge yeah, photo. Around. Oh, the Cambridge one. Yeah, what's that all about? Okay, okay. Well, first of all, let me show you this. This was. Uh, I hope Alex doesn't mind, but I'm going to show you this. This was Alex's wedding. Oh, that's uh, great. This was like would have been 1986 because I said we did that gig, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And I was the best man in the gray suit. There you go. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So, so this was taken. Uh, now this says this picture was taken, and we were with Quicksilver Talent Associates at that time. I remember Quicksilver from uh, which was yes. which was a local uh, that was Don and Sam Hergott, mm -hmm. and they were they were yeah. our agents. They were our agents, and Those we took boots. this picture. Uh, he found some photographer, and I can't remember where this picture was taken, but there's another one where we were uh, standing on a bridge outside of Esther Hazy. Lord knows what was doing there. <laughs> where but, the hell's Esther Hazy? <laughs> yeah, where the hell's Esther Hazy now? Esther Hazy, <laughs> never Esther heard of that. Is another uh, potash mining town. I know That's it well. Right. Yeah. That's right. And if you look at Alex's boots, you see Those Alex's boots there? Fantastic. Yeah. Alex bought those boots. Alex bought those boots or his mother bought those boots when she was in Montreal uh, <laughs> because we never got out to those places. We were still we were still uh, we were still in high school at this at this age. Oh, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, I love how the photographer sure. said, "Hey, put your, put your, let's see your boots, Alex." And then, okay, Kevin, you should put yours up there too and make a window sill for the <laughs> oh other team. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, here's a gold album from uh, oh, first, yes. first album. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that one. Uh, yeah. what Tell us about the. Uh, okay, keep going. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and this is what I this is what I use now. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was left in the dryer too long, it looks like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hang on, hang on, guys. Hang on. Uh, okay. This is this is the band with Mike Martin, who was our sound man. This was us visiting uh visiting Alex's mom cuz his mom and dad lived in Montreal. And oh, we were at cool. we were at their parents' place and Mike Martin is this guy right here. And he, oh, lives, yeah. he lives in Kelowna, and he's still an awesome sound man. Fantastic. Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. It looks like uh, the Stanley Cup on the coffee table. <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, what else have yeah. I got? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> this is uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I wasn't really expecting. This is oh, uh, this is the Hall of Fame 2000. It's Western Canadian Hall of Fame. Brilliant. Well, we got cool. inducted into the Hall of Fame, Western Canadian Media's Hall of Fame with uh what Buffy, was Buffy. Buffy St. Marie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. oh yeah. awesome. Wow. Another yeah, legend. Yeah, yeah. Another legend. Oh. That's great. Uh, I don't know. That's what why else when I was I looking got. for pictures, her picture came up. I typed in Q uh, Queen wow. City Kids and Buffy St. Marie came up. Is that right? Interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, must have been okay. from that. Okay, hang on. I got one more. Yeah, please. Maybe I'll show you this. <sighs> Just so you know, you're making every other guest look terrible because they never, they're never this prepared. What do you oh, think? Yeah, what do you think of this one? There's the bitch. Yeah. Okay, so that here's the bitch. This, this is 1998 at yeah. uh, Minnedosa. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Minnedosa. You got. I'm sure you guys have played Minnedosa in one. Oh in yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. Time or another. That's a sick mm -hmm. guitar, man. So you still have that guitar? Oh, oh yeah. As, as a matter of fact, Great. I bought a I bought a double to it, but it's not as nice. Uh, mm. And I gutted that guitar, by the way, because it had all kinds of active electronics and yeah, and I know. Active, active electronics in the guitar that, that doesn't do anything for me. You, you gotta no. you gotta get it out of your hands, and you mm -hmm. gotta get it out of the tubes and the speakers. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. in my mind, in my mind. Yeah, most people uh, I know they all they all kind of uh, neuter those things because there's so much going on on those damn guitars. Well, you know? and, yeah, and it's a bunch of junk half the time. Or at least yeah. back then it was. Yeah. Uh, here's a good one. Do you like this one? Oh yeah. I I have awesome. no idea. My uh my wife just That's handed it? it to me. <laughs> That's your Gibson. <laughs> That's yeah. the last What happened yeah. to that guitar? That's what happened the... to that guitar? Uh I had to sell it when I was broke. Oh. I That's had a, I had some I had time. some I had some dark years and well okay. not dark years. I just I just wasn't, you know, couldn't make ends meet. And I actually sold it to a friend of mine and he won't sell it back. Oh, he still uh, has it. Uh, you know he, it he still has it. Uh, uh some people have tried to buy it from him. Uh somebody tried to buy it for for uh, me for my 50th birthday, and they tried to buy it for me for my 60th birthday. So maybe 70. 
We'll see what happens. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have it back. I'd love absolutely to have it back. Yeah, for sure. That's a beauty. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Those are pretty rare guitars too. You don't see them a lot. You don't. You don't. No. And they're probably worth a lot of money now. I I have no idea mm -hmm. what what uh, that BC Rich would be worth. I mean, it's worth everything to me. So what year is it? Yeah. Uh, well, that was another interesting story. That was the guitar that I bought from Streetheart when John Hanna was in the band. Okay. Because mm. it it's a 10 string, right? And they used yeah. it for one song. Uh, I can't remember what song it was. Was it What Kind of Love Is This? Or Anyway, mm. uh, I ended up buying it when they regrouped and Jeff Neal came in the band, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. It is a it is an absolutely unbelievable guitar to hold in your hands, and it is mm -hmm. so light and so yeah. It's, it's so it's a seventy something. It would it would probably be a late seventies uh, BC okay. Rich. I've never probably. actually uh, you know gotten the serial number and and uh, you know done that research, but I probably should. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to know. A lot of guys. I, I mean, Slash is obsessed with those things. He has a bunch. Really? And Mockingbirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a bunch of bitches. Yeah. He's, oh, I didn't you know, know that. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. But that's a cool. Joe Perry thing too, right? Yeah. And Joe yeah. Perry, yeah. yeah. In the 70s, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 made a nice guitar because well, that's that's a yeah. one piece, that's a one piece neck and body, right? Wow. The body yeah. yes. like you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So yeah. And uh, Donnelly would play like a, an eagle or something. He had a BC he, Rich too. He had, he had uh no, he had a Kramer. Oh, that's right. He had the Kramer. He had a, he had a Kramer with the, neck, yeah. with the metal neck. Yeah, that that's was right. a bitch yeah, yeah. at arenas. That's yeah, mm. I bet. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a bitch at arenas. For Spider sure. had the base, the BC Rich base. That's right. That's Spider had like the BC. Yeah, that's that's correct. Correct. being a very popular base. Yeah. Spider. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that yeah. base exists too. Like Spider let go of that base. And somebody has it, and uh, in Winnipeg, yeah, yeah, in Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. somebody has it, eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it exists. Uh, okay, it, okay. It was just a four string, right? It didn't have the low B. That old. Spider it was only yeah. A four. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Spider, spider. But he bought it. He bought it because of the. Uh, it had like 20, 24 frets, maybe. You know, in like under my thumb, he gets way up there, dude. That's little, little, little. it. That's so right. He bought it for that. Yeah. You know? yeah. But now yeah. he has a bunch of like probably lighter and. He's yeah. a very fancy, fancy he, player. He's a, he's very, very fancy player, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, one yeah. and one of the best, one of the best, one of the he best played, for sure, one of the best. Yeah, he played in my high school when I was sixteen at Camping High School in Regina, and I, wow. uh, I, I remember, I remember we were sitting. You know, uh, it was an all boys school, Catholic school. We don't want to go down that road, uh, but <laughs> but and, and by the and by the way, the whole band went there. The whole really? band went there. Yeah, ah, we, really. we did. Be, I, I wasn't going to, some of us weren't going to go, but we thought in order to keep the band together, it'd be better to stay in the same school. <laughs> uh, wow. That's and, commitment. And, and, anyway, it was a small school. It was a great school. Uh, it was only 350 people in high school. So it was, uh, it was good. But Spider was in a band and came to do a show in, in a auditorium or something like that. And uh, I, I remember all of us just looking at each other and just our mouths were like hanging on the, you know, on the floor I because, bet. you know, like, cause he was, he was a, a wonder at that time. Right. I bet. Yeah. You know, and he would have only been about 18 or whatever. Mm. I don't even know how old spider is. He's probably, cause Kenny was 10 years older than me, I think. So, but anyway, but they're all still going strong. I love it. They Fantastic. are. Now, what about yeah. like, would you be Cambridge and Wiscana would have been their band? Like you guys all would have been, Around the same time, or ah, uh, Wascana, that could I have been, it. yeah, Wascana for sure. Uh, uh that's and, pre Streetheart, and that's, that was you know. that was pre Streetheart. There was that, and and uh, uh, his first hit was Jezebel, right? And wasn't that yes, it was yeah. Jezebel, and it was uh, it was way back, that was in the 60s. Hmm. Wow. What about Harlem Lady? Oh, and he had a hit called Harlem Lady, too, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I mean, basically, yeah, basically, I guess he was before everybody in a way. He was pretty. He kind of was. He kind of was. I saw. I saw him in a. Um, I snuck into a, a dance when I was ten or eleven. I was. I was. Uh, I used to go to the farm uh, in uh, Lake Lenora, Saskatchewan, Munster area, Humboldt, all that area up there. I used to go there uh, in the summers and uh, and live with my sister because she uh, she married a farmer there. And he was playing in Munster, and Munster had a round building hall, right? Mm. That's not you far know? from where I grew up in Lanigan, by the way. Munster's uh, like not yeah, far from there. Yeah, exactly. They used to have a round uh, a round hall, 
and that was the first time I saw Kenny Shields, and I walked out of there, and I, I swear to God, I, I, I that was it. I was gonna be our, I was gonna be in a rock band, and I went out and started buying rock and roll clothes immediately. <laughs> you know, like, like, forget the plaid pants. You know, when you guys, when you guys talk about, when you guys talk about, uh, you know, having heroes when you're young, and and uh, things that made things that made you go, huh? Uh, you know, like, or why you got in the business is, uh, you know, like, yeah, Kenny, Kenny was right up there with him, you know, and oh, Paul, yeah. Paul Dean, when I saw Paul Dean for the first time, I went, wow, mm, I bet. love that yeah. man. Love that yeah. man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's still a monster. Totally. Hey, Johnny Lang is Langdon's asking an interesting question. I don't mean to cut anybody off, but he's oh. talking about, oh, you're already, you're already on it. How about QCK yeah. playing with Ozzy back in the early eighties with Randy Rhodes and all that? I'm very curious yeah. if you have any memories of that particular experience. Well, let, let, let me know. Uh, I'll let you know right now. Uh, Randy Rhodes, I didn't have anything to do with, uh, with Ozzy, but we did do an Eastern tour when they released the second album. Uh, I think it was the black box album that we went out and we did Hamilton, uh, Quebec city, uh, Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, wow. and we did that with uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Randy Rhodes, and that was only six so months cool. before he passed away, right, in, in the mm. plane crash. And uh, he and I, he and I hung out a little bit. We went to record stores and things oh, wow. like that. Uh, uh, but but uh, the thing about Randy Rhodes was he'd be there at nine in the morning at the at the uh, um, at the stadium or the arena or whatever. And he would play till 11 and then he'd have lunch and then he would play from 12 until four. And then wow. he would have, uh, they'd have their dinner and then they would do sound check. And then he played the gig like this guy, wow. uh, you know, like he was, he was so dedicated and well, and some of those, some of those, you can just tell which songs are his, right? I mean, sure, he was a yeah. hell of a player. I, I, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed uh, that time. For I sure, bet. yeah. It was. Crazy. I think it was only like five or six gigs, but uh, it was it was quite amazing being the warm up act for Ozzy Osbourne because I never heard anything except Ozzy, Ozzy, <laughs> Ozzy. Like that's all I heard from the moment we went on till the time the show was over. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. but uh, so we we kind of got we kind of got uh, you know put in that that kind of music which was super hard rock but we weren't really hard rock it was more you know we had poppy melodies and and yeah. uh you know like so they they were kind of you know the record companies what they do or at least what they used to do is you know they make all these stupid decisions and uh not not that i'm uh pissed off that i played with ozzy osbourne don't get me wrong but uh yeah that was one of our one of our biggest gigs for sure and and uh you know you learn a lot uh, you know, back then, you know, the, the roadies says sometimes if they don't, if you piss them off just a little bit, then you, you got nothing in your monitor, you yeah. don't hear yourself or, or they'll no put some, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You, you find yourself wandering around the stage trying to get into the light, you know, <laughs> yeah. because, because the light is definitely not on you. So you go searching for it. Yeah that, yeah. that was the classic lineup too. Tommy Aldridge and Luke yeah, oh. yeah would have been. The Don't Diver have, Madman. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Hey, we got a young band called Sticks and Stones. They're they're here hey, in they're the all audience. Those guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're asking how did Dave Languth get into the band? They're at is that a question for me? I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, plays with Kim Mitchell. I don't know. Oh, right? Yeah. He what? Uh, he plays with Kim Mitchell. He, and he played okay. with Nelly Furtado. He's a good friend of mine. Oh, okay. Well, okay. He, he, so, never played, uh, he never played with us. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so. Maybe yeah. they can uh, embellish on their question. Yeah. You don't want to ask. I think the the most pressing thing of this entire thing that I've never even really thought to ask you in the, in all these years that we've yes. interacted is like, where does the California come from, Kevin California Finn? Oh, I always geez. think it was like such an interesting thing because, uh, you know, being a guy from Saskatchewan, I'm like. But we always knew you as Kevin California Finn, and never questioned yeah, yeah, it true. until right now. I, I'm not to ask uh, Yeah, that. <laughs> that's true. You know, I it's a it's a it's a hard it's a long story, and uh, you know the other guys might be able to tell you better than that. But my dad's name was Al, uh, Alvin, and Alex's name obviously was Alex, and so 
somehow it got to be my nickname became Cal because it was always Cal and Al or Alan Cal, okay. right? Cal and Al. <laughs> and and we used to suntan so much in the in the summer times, right? We'd be on <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning, we'd be on the roof of the bar or whatever, trying to and we used to have competitions to see who could get darker and all of that. And I, I don't know, somebody called me California one day and I, I it stuck. It's, uh, I, love I love it. it. <laughs> That's a great story. That's pretty That's silly awesome. if you ask me. But I always uh, wondered because I was kind of like, like, did you have aspirations to go to LA or were you going to, you know, did you spend time there? I was like, no, no, no nothing. Just, no. It's just one Here, of those nicknames. Here's proof of the tanning. It was yeah. Just, yeah, there you it, go. Yeah. It was before the tanning booth, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Alex looks pretty dark in that picture. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, exactly. Hey, can, can he, we also comment? Severe, go ahead. The, so the QCK logo that we all know, see in the in the corner on the left, yeah. and you brought it up to us, Kevin, the other day when oh, we were yeah. hanging at Regina, and you and I'm glad you did because, and if anyone who's a you know a fan of Tuke and that wonders when you see, can everyone see my coffee cup? Yeah. Do you understand has- the honor to? Our yeah. heroes in the Queen you guys, City. Kid. You guys, it's that, in our that, logo. That almost tears me up to see that you guys did that. It's so subtle and it's 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 just unbelievable. <laughs> Street art and Queen City kids. Yep. Uh, you got it in there. Okay, yeah. can I ask you guys a question? How'd Go you ahead. come up with how'd you come up with the name Tuke? Just it was a Canadian cover thing that we, we started off just doing charity stuff, uh, benefit shows, um, right. and Fitz had the idea of let's just do all Canadian music. And I was like, Yeah, that sounds like fun. And then um, we had to come up with something. I think I think so Corey we're throwing around a bunch of uh, Canadian sort of terms. Yeah. I think Corey, uh, might have pitched, I think you might have pitched the Tukes, or maybe Jody thought of the Tukes. Yeah, Jody said. I think I think my wife said Tuke heads or something like that, and we just kind of truncated that to Tuke. Yeah, it no, was either no. it was either going to be Tuke or the Fun Ken Rights Band. No. Fun Ken. <laughs> no. The what? Right. <laughs> exactly. Fun, fun, fun Ken, Ken writes like Ken writes. Fun oh, fucking so writes, man. If you oh, say it right okay. fast, it's fucking okay. writes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, as far as uh, uh, okay, uh, moving who on. Was, who who was playing? <laughs> who was playing on on uh, this Dave guy? Uh, he did play with Streetheart, but uh, not with us. It was. Uh, uh, a little guy from Winnipeg, uh, and he works with, uh, why can't I remember his name now? Anyway, uh, he wasn't the guitar. He wasn't the drummer when I played with Streetheart. So uh, that's where that came from. Maybe that's it was Kevin Swan. From. Kevin Swan. That was it. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, that's my dear friends. Yeah. He, yeah, he worked and he, for Michael Bublé as well with Dean Roney. He Rony works for Michael because... Bublé and, and Roney. I saw them in Saskatoon a couple years ago. Yeah, he was. He looks after the teleprompter stuff, and and he's also uh, a drum tech. Drum tech. Or yeah. you got to put up Jimmy D's question. I think that's a really good one. Where's Jimmy D? Ah, uh, is, is anyone still, still carrying, carrying this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carrying yeah. in the stick. That well, might yeah. be one of the greatest guitar riffs of all time. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. I can tell. I can tell you that that stick is dragging behind me. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, stick exactly. is dragging behind me. Let's uh, talk yeah. about your guitar riffs because they're some of the most iconic and memorable. Uh, they go up there with any riff ever in history, especially oh, yeah, like the the dance riff, which okay. is like. It makes it's girls want to dance, riff. yeah, and hey, get sexy guys, and stuff, right? It just guys, like it's almost panty remover. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad the tradition carried on. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? You got to remember that uh, Alex was the main writer in the band, and okay. Alex, w- Alex would come up with riffs uh, and things like that, and then. And then he would toss it to me, and then it, and then I would make it. I would make it uh, the lick, and then we built around that. But Alex really was uh, the main writer in the band, and he came up with a lot of those things. Let me tell you. Okay. Uh, I wrote a lot of the songs, and and uh, everybody else uh, just filled in all the blanks. You know what I mean? Mm, right. Do you are are you ever it- aware of the fact? And Fitz and I have talked about this a couple times, John. Donnelly and Alex, the fact that the rumor is and the story, the myth is that Aerosmith has 
attempted to record a version of dance. And I heard this from their guitar tech back in those days. And I'm talking like in the Vancouver days when they were recording at Little Mountain. That's he right. swears he swears that Aerosmith recorded a version of dance that never hmm. uh, they never okay. used. But, okay. but well, we, I I. I, I, I know all that stuff uh, uh -huh. that that was that, that was we we were told by a publicist or somebody that they were looking at it or something uh, I, I don't remember the whole story but I do remember that it never it never came to fruition um, in in the fact that and if they did record it I I have never heard it you Let would have been I, that'd be, it would have been, been really Bruce cool to hear Fairburn. that it would have been Pardon. Bruce Fairburn producing, so right. And Fairburn has deep roots in Prism and all that kind of stuff. So it's not right. like he wasn't aware of all, all what you guys were doing. Of course, he right. was very aware. Right. And right. Aerosmith mm -hmm. would have done a very convincing. Oh job my God! Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be. I, I I wouldn't be renting this shirt right now. I'd be probably. <laughs> I you know I I would own it, baby. I would own it. <laughs> You'd still have a Gibson too. <laughs> yeah, I still have my Gibson. You're right. Yeah, can you imagine? You know, like just uh, one, one. Uh, yeah, yeah. We thought about that. You know, look at the look at uh, uh, well, the Prism Boys, and like you guys do all those songs so well. And the Trooper Boys. I heard today or yesterday that uh, I meant to talk about that, this. That yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Like we, Ray, we meant to. Ray yeah, let's and talk about it, yeah. Ray and uh, and Smith. Uh, they uh, they shut her down. I guess. Eh. Really? Yeah, they retired. They are good. retiring, and they're handing the reins over to, you know, the to rest. keep the, the band will can carry on without the main yeah. guys. It's basically like Mick and Keith are no longer in the Stones. Yeah, That's I, 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 I uh, you know, he, yeah, strange. they, they, they gave them the blessing for sure that they could carry yeah. on if they wanted to. But huh. I mean, uh, those would be big shoes to fill. Well, the, the, the blessing and probably ten to fifteen percent of the gross income, I would assume. <laughs> yeah yeah and those me. guys those guys have had a lot of good success with their songs and 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 not only that talking about selling songs uh you know they they've used their you, you've heard their songs and all kinds of uh you know jingles and and things yep. like it's just that they've done very well with those songs for sure mm -hmm. uh, it's and, amazing and they're not in guys. the canadian music hall of fame too they've really? never been in the in the music hall mm -hmm. canadian music hall they, of fame that's, yeah that's a crime and, yeah they never made it in the canadian i don't think so no oh uh, yeah oh, maybe that God. will change your, you know maybe I, the western canada maybe the western canada hall of fame they must yeah, be in that right i think they must be in that but uh yeah it's just like the guess who is not in the american uh uh oh. hall of fame right they were talking about mm -hmm. that uh, the uh, not that long ago yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that sounds right. like a no-brainer too yeah, yeah. One would one would think with the records they sold. Well, eventually uh, they're going to start. I mean, we, there's so many conversations about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Eventually they're going to run out of people to put in that damn thing. So everybody's yeah. going to end up in it. We're all going to yeah. be in it someday. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? It's all good. It's all good. Exactly. Man. They yeah. still add more. Come on, some more time. They're only 71 and 72. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I know. It, it is interesting to see because Ray and uh, is, that how, and is that how old they are? Yeah. Ray and Smith. Yeah. Okay. Smith seventy two, McGuire seventy one. Right, right. Huh. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot, a lot of guys in their late seventies out there and uh, playing uh, still, you know, the Canadian bands. Is Kim yeah. Mitchell still playing? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think so. yeah, he's still yeah. doing yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. You guys remember Gatto? Of course. Yeah, we had yeah. Greg we on had here. Greg Gatto, it's on. Did we you? Love I, yeah. I love him. Yeah, keep it, uh, keep it under your hat. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man, we used to see those guys and Gino Gino Scarpelli, I think, was a guitar player and the three piece uh -huh. band and oh my god, did they rock. Yeah. I they rock. Yeah. I think yeah. I think Gato has a radio does he do a radio show in Calgary? I think he's in Calgary. Time, yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. He lives in Calgary anyway, I know that. I didn't know that. Yep. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. 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 yeah hey, it must um, be, I think we asked ahead. John about this. A while back, but um, what do you know about this image? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that girl, and and was she ever released from this? Oh my <laughs> from this god! This Saran Rap situation. Yeah. You got you guys. That is that is a crazy story, and I I I don't I don't know exactly know who came up with the idea to wrap her in Saran Wrap. Well, now I mean now it would be shrink wrap, but but uh, back then it was just Saran Wrap. <laughs> 
Right. Um, but this poor young girl uh, was, I think she was 16 years old and oh my. she came down from a high school, 16 or 18. I'm not sure. I don't want to get in any trouble because she was just, <laughs> she was just the, uh, she was just the model for the front of the cover. And, and mm -hmm. uh, he, the same guy that did uh, meanwhile back in Paris, mm, did, yeah. did, did the cover of this. And if you, if you put them side by side, I you see will that. see some similarities. Interesting. Well, I'm going to do that right makeup, now. Right? Is this, he kind of, he kind of, like he kind of has. A, he can't, yeah, it was done in Toronto. He kind of, okay. the, the guy that set it up or uh, who designed it, uh, he kind of had a style. Uh, but this poor girl, uh, there was uh, like two inches of sweat underneath this girl. Oh my god! Uh, oh, imagine, because, because yeah. you know, it doesn't breathe, and she was in that outfit for uh, hours. Yeah. hours yeah. yeah you know you know how for photographers to just go and the back. lights and everything the else lights. Really yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah yeah it gets and this is you guys behind the camera looking at her <laughs> yeah. you, notice the, you notice the piece of saran wrap there uh yeah. that's right right here yeah, that's true. Wrap, yeah, I never together. put that together. That's exactly yeah. right. My <laughs> friend pointed that out. That's me hilarious. Back kids, yeah. Huh. Anyway, that's so, that's about all I know about that girl. I, okay, I, that's a good story. Yeah. So now we have QCK current, and yes. are you guys still um, got any anything planned for this coming year or anything? Yeah. Like, well, when's the next Q QCK show? You know, is that me? Me. Okay. Uh, uh, the thing that was uh, that picture right there is the uh, Grey Cup in Winnipeg as well. Um, before uh, Loverboy or, or 5440 came on, I can't remember exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what, Alex has some health problems with his ears. Oh, uh, about that. Yeah. yeah, he has tinnitus. Uh, I don't want to mm. go too much into it, but he has tinnitus to the nth degree. Oh no! Boys. And uh, okay. when he he has to stay away from uh, uh, anything like the last time we played, which I I think was in sixteen, maybe early seventeen. Uh, it was so much he didn't sleep for a month. Oh uh, my god! Because it just carries on, and and uh, it's very 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 bad. So he he has a real problem with it, and he decided that uh, you know that was uh, that was going to be it. But having said that, um, you know when I saw you guys play at the Turby Center, and uh, you know you said that it's you know you're wearing the monitors in the ears and, and all of that, and it's it's actually quite quiet. Yeah, it can uh, be. Uh, yeah. It it can be. It can yeah, be. Yeah. And I know. Uh, uh, Blue Rodeo, I know uh, a couple of the guys in that band have some serious hearing problems. Oh, really? And yeah, and they they have all their amps uh, backstage, facing the other way. I mean, it's not it's, that's not an old story, but uh, mm -hmm. and they just have the monitors really light, and you know, and they build the the plexiglass around the drummers, which I don't like, but uh, right. Uh, well, I I like to be right. Uh, I like to have my head right in that bass drum if you know what i'm saying yeah of course like, yeah are you right saying yeah yeah you know you know what i'm talking you know, about the thing though the thing with the in-ears it's deceiving because i should just speak for myself as a drummer it's yeah still pretty freaking loud like i have to have it fairly loud because just the ambience from the of drum or snare uh, in particular to get over your instrument to yeah. hear everybody else i still gotta have it pretty loud and it's right next to my eardrum right so it's just hammering it so yeah. i still my ears still ring pretty good I'll it's better you. than if i take would take them out and just slam on a snare drum all night but yeah well, however I, you could be standing at a lead point, yeah go ahead no i was just gonna say point being is you know through the course of a two-hour show when we have these in we you know i i don't know about todd your ears still ring after a whole show with the in-ears in or not too i'm bad? very lucky with my hearing that's good Corey. Yeah. but um yeah i uh, i have a bit of tinnitus you know all day long 24 7. it's alex, not, not to the point where i can't drown it out but um yeah, yeah it's there uh, for alex, sure alex hears thing alex hears thing three times louder than what they are like if oh, he's man. even if he's oh. standing standing beside a diesel engine like a truck on the street oh, no. like yeah. that'll drive him over the top right it's mm -hmm. it's it's uh so like I, I i something i don't i don't quite totally understand but it can be uh it can be really uh uh 
how do what I say it? It can be it, it, like it can just change your life, right? So, oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, and and he's tried all kinds of therapy and and uh, you know to train your your brain. You you can go to therapy to train your brain to not hear a certain frequency, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, he's got you know seven hundred dollar uh, fighter jet pilot ear earplugs. Uh, that doesn't help. Uh, sure, you know, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad. So. So anyway, he's decided that he, uh, you know, he told us quite a while ago, a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. that uh, he doesn't think that that's ever going to happen again. But I always say never say never. You never know. That's mm-hmm. the thing. You know, it's, you uh, know. I mean, that's 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 an understandable reason to not be playing because well, that's and, debilitating. And, and the thing about it is we're like we're all in, we're all uh, Alex is going to be 64 on uh, November 11th. Uh, remember right. day. And uh, everybody's getting up there, and uh, you know, and and not only that, he has a he has a, a beautiful son yeah. uh, that's uh, that's uh, just in grade school, and he likes uh, spending his time with that uh, child because uh, he started late. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I wouldn't blame anybody because when it, when it's that debilitating. Uh, that you have to, you know, screw yourself up for a month after you do a gig. Well, that's, yeah, that's no yeah you can't do that, right? No, it's not mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. It, it and, really you is know, and he, he actually, he gave us a blessing too. He said, if you guys want to go out and, and uh, do it. So uh, the only guy I know that can sing like him is, uh, is that you, Todd? That you? <laughs> Dude. So, <laughs> Todd, you do a heartbeat. It, that'd, be, it, that'd be a blast. Yeah, so you know what I mean. Like he did give us that blessing, but you know, John's really busy. Everybody's busy doing their thing. It's it's one of those things, oh, and yeah. and it's it's guys like you that that uh, keep us going and keep keep the music alive. That's what I love about you guys more than anything. Is just you know you're out there doing your thing, and and and, and that's the, that's just a little thing you do on the side, right? Because you're all doing <laughs> a million other things, and I think it's fantastic. It it shows the the depth of what a, uh, a musician has to do now to, to stay alive and, uh, and uh, you know, stay, st- make a living in this business. Right. Well, if, if I have any advice for any musician, it's that crime pays. Crime <laughs> pays. Yeah. <laughs> Briefly. It's, it's a risky yeah, endeavor. Yeah. But and if, yeah. that, if <laughs> that guy comes home and gets those guitars, yeah, yeah, you're in yeah, trouble. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't let those people know that I'm in their house. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, but I think it's something to be said about the fact that you guys, you know, like most bands, you know, the fact that you guys sort of were pulled apart by the industry in the sense that the manager and all that stuff that went yeah. on, which is absolutely unforgivable in my eyes. When I think yeah. about all the bands like yourselves and Kick Axe and Streetheart, the, some of our, our all-time favorite bands were just, you know, just had the rug pulled out from under them. But yeah. it's it's there is something to be said about the fact that that pulled you guys apart. It wasn't that, you know, four guys, because every band that we could talk about Oh, from yeah. the Beatles, from the Beatles to everybody else, had a falling out. Two guys don't see eye to eye; they break up. But you guys never seem to have that, and you always seem to be able to. The fact that you're still friends to this day, yeah, is commendable. <clears throat> well, I think that a lot of times in in uh, in music uh, and even in sports, uh, if one guy's writing the song and all of a sudden the band takes off, and then that guy gets rich, and the other guys aren't getting as rich. Yeah. You show uh, up in a Pinto, and he yeah, shows up in a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, and and all of us, all of a sudden, you're not traveling together anymore, and you're yeah. not. It's uh, it, it uh, th- that does break up a lot of people and a lot of you know, and egos, egos is yeah. a big one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we, you know, we grew up together. We literally grew up together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And and it just it just never became that issue, right? And and not right. only that, I I told you that Alex. Alex, uh, uh, John and Jeff wrote songs too. And, and, and we all, uh, the thing was, we all went 25% on the songs and we did that on purpose because if, if anything happened and somebody got really rich, well, you know what I mean? If we're going to get rich, we're all going to get rich. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best. And, and I think, I think that's a commendable thing to do. You know, it doesn't matter, uh, exactly what your contribution is, but at the same time, I mean, I thought that was a pretty cool way to do it. And, was and there there, a long, there's, a, there's other bands. There's other bands that have done that, of course, obviously. You too. Yeah, a lot of those bands example, yeah. are still together. Yeah, that's, that's why you right. Still together. Yeah. Um, that's true. Was there a yeah. long conversation about about 
John's just gonna play one note for four minutes in in uh, Kids World. <laughs> Kids World. <laughs> <laughs> Kids World is the greatest song of all time. But it it took us a while to realize John's just going bump, bump yeah. for yeah. like three three and a half minutes or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I can't. I I think I I I'm not sure, but I think. I think Gary Stratacek might have had something, uh, something to do with that song, if I'm not mistaken. Did you ask John that question? Yeah, we, did. we did. We did actually. And what did he say? I wonder. <laughs> he, he said that he was getting in trouble for playing too too many notes. <laughs> well, he, he likes, I gotta tell you, John, he is a lead bass player. There's no question about it. That's he what's likes, so funny yeah. about it. Because so it was like a, mid, it. a middle finger. It, it was. He gave the middle it finger. Was. So I'm gonna just write a song or just do one note. <laughs> and, and the anti lead bass player. When, when we were when we were coming up with because that was written around the same time as carrying the stick too and it was like okay let's let's take this right down to the bare bones yeah, yeah. and and uh let's make this as as stark as you possibly can and uh you know that's that's what came out of it but yeah i i, I can imagine uh for john how hard it is to play that song. <laughs> I thought it was such a I remember statement, seeing, actually. I think it, such it a, left yeah, a lot yeah. of room for me. Yeah, uh, hell yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so. But yeah, that's, yeah, he, that, he, that's a good question, by the way. Yeah. I, I saw I, you guys at the at the Center of the Arts, and I remember that song came on and just the bass, you know, intro kind of thing. And what lacked in the amount of notes in the bass part was made up for in his his stage choreography. Kick his feet up in the air. Boom. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, left John leg, right King, leg, yeah. left leg. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we we did like to put on a show. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. One yeah. of those things, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, when I get on stage, I smile from ear to ear. I can't get it off. So right on. I just can't get it off. It's just the way it is. Well, now we, now awesome. to get you on stage, we have to drag you out on a toque show. That's yeah, gonna yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'd love to do something like that, man. Well, well, next I'll time we'll do it. Lose a few pounds and we'll get oh, on baby. there. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> we'll get you so, one of these toque wigs. You can. Oh, that's <laughs> <the trick. laughs> we're gonna hey, start selling them at merch. Corey, I, <laughs> yeah. Corey, Corey, I love your hat. That's yeah, thanks, out. man. Check yeah, this out. Courtesy of someone I know Check. in the band. Yeah, you Check bet. This out. Yeah, I think I got one too. Awesome! Oh, Look at you guys. Buddy. That's fantastic. Signed. Hey, Signed. so. So can I ask you a question? I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but uh, yeah, you guys, are you going to do an album of your own songs? Is that uh, is that coming down the pipe? Well, we've done a, a, a number of I mean, songs, but um, yeah, I, I, it's a, it's such a funny time. It's it's interesting talking to a guy like you, who's you know back in the day, you put a band together, you 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 played gigs, you built an audience, you recorded the songs you're writing. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, you got a record contract, and then it was kind of up to the eyes of the beholder what happens to you after yeah. that. In this day and age, it's such a strange time that the idea of making music has become such a the, the Kiss guys were talking about this on the cruise. They were kind of like, you know, it's just like the 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 um, the cottage industry of making music now of like, you know, it's basically bands are making music to to go on the road, you know, to yeah. you know, that's that's where the yeah. money is, you know. So right. But that doesn't stop us from writing. We've been writing a bunch and uh, and we released um We've released a couple already, so and there'll be more Two to songs. come. It's just sort of like it's it's fun, you know. It's like it's yeah, what just, musicians do. Just you know? a few at a time, right? Yeah, I mean, yes. it's sort of like takes away this. Like I kind of feel in a weird way that we've kind of joked about it being almost like like we're releasing forty fives, you know, like like Hound Dog with Blue right. Slate Shoes on the other side. Like it's like the weirdest <laughs> thing, but it's well, it, kind of back to that in a funny way. Yeah, you know, all these uh, uh, all these avenues where you can buy music, whether it be. Uh, uh, you know, that's what you do. You buy one song at a time, right? And it's exactly, kind of like, yeah. I mean, I remember when we were buying records. I mean, that, that was all we could afford was we want to learn that song. So, we you know, we go and buy, uh, you know, just the 45, right? And then we'd, we'd have to play it till the, the grooves were gone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just I think to, just to of, learn it. And we're all of that generation that a collection of songs with a title is is what you know to me feels like a complete work when you go here's 10 songs it's called yeah, yeah, black yeah. box or you know yeah. and so to that that to us has always been it started this whole thing started as you know as just our loving homage to all this music that you have yeah. made and and, Kenny and, and, I, and I I think that's the most incredible thing about you guys doing that because you all have you know successful careers out there doing your thing and uh, and then decided to do this which is just 
you know, it's it's a it's a great homage to to uh, being a Canadian, I think, because yeah. uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of great music that just never never really got anywhere yeah. outside of Western Canada or never got outside. That's exactly of, it. Yeah, you know, uh, every once in a while you'd hear we'd hear we'd hear from a fan that was living in in the states because somebody went there to visit and had the record or had the you know that's the way it worked back then totally yeah. uh but uh you know like it, like the pumps for instance the pumps and yeah. orphan i love yeah. those guys me too yeah. have some great songs and and uh you know it's just it's one of those things it's one of those i things. think we're the perfect example of the of the cliche of there's nobody more canadian than canadians not living in canada <laughs> it's like my you know, also, friends, you know, all your brit friends will have like union jack license plates and all this stuff I'm like dude yeah i know you're from england i get yeah, it you know? but, yeah so canadians yeah. are like that too you go over to i go over to my canadian friends houses and april wine's cranked up i go okay you know it's like it's yeah, just yeah. You always gotta share your love yeah uh, you know be, the way you guys were as kids kevin and a band from when you were so young and you stayed that band. Okay, so everybody in Took we're kind of you know in a way doing what you guys did. We're just doing it many years later. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. like we're all best friends and yeah. we didn't get to, we all didn't grow up down the street from each other, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like we're trying to say how how do you put a band together with your best buddies? And yeah, we've had all these other, you know, experiences, but that's right. sort of how we're we treat it now. It's it's an even, you know, everybody contributes the same and we all feel like we've known each other our whole lives, which we have. Fantastic. And, right? That makes Fantastic. sense, guys. I, I think I'm speaking yeah. for everybody. Yep. hundred percent. Absolutely. Totally. Well, I, I think uh, I think you guys got something really special going. Uh and uh I've never met a nicer group of people. Uh, you, know, like, you should hear uh, us talk behind your back as soon as this is over. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just kidding. And I and I, I have to thank you again for inviting me on the show because uh, uh, now that I uh, now that I uh, have done it, I just uh, I, I've got all kinds of tingling tingling going on. It's fantastic, like it. right? Gets the juices going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hope yeah. so. I hope it kind of you know it, nothing would thrill us more than to be like if you called us one day and go. What do you think of this riff? And we go, yeah. oh my god, let's let's, <laughs> let's build a song out of that riff. You know? Right. Yeah. On, we man. actually wrote right a on. song. We wrote a song with Derry Grian from uh, Honeymoon Suite. Like, oh, you know? I love him. He's yeah, fantastic. he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just kind of yeah. like you know, it, it, that's just been part of the fun of making connections with guys like yourself who meant a lot to us. Like I, I, I tell that's a true story. I ran down Second Ave. Yeah. To get yeah. Alex's autograph, and I remember I had a Loverboy T-shirt. I, I had just seen Loverboy. It was like, oh, really? And he and he goes, and he just had a. I can't remember what he said, but something about Lover Boy. He was kind of like, because to to me, I was like, this is Alex Chwacki. I was like, whether yeah, it's yeah. Lover Boy or Rolling Stones, the same as anything else. And he was. Well, I just remember him commenting on that shirt. But it was like, you know, and years later, I would play that same room. I don't think it was called the A4 anymore, but it was always a big deal to me that you guys had played there. I remember sneaking into that bar at like thirteen or fourteen and watching <laughs> and watching Orphan. And oh open, yeah. I remember them playing I am the walrus and it being a really oh, yeah. big deal. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah. basically yeah. it's all your guys' fault. Like we could have been doctors or lawyers or something respectable, but then you guys I know. Happened. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, I was I was going into university to become a dentist and and we decided really? it, you know, after grade 12 it was going to be uh, uh okay, well, we'll just we'll just go out for one year and just see what goes on and then uh, <laughs> and here we are all these years yeah, later. I there we are, there we are. Yeah, but I but the it. education, the education that we got on the road and and exactly. uh you know, like running a business and we're all very mm -hmm. successful guys. Absolutely, um, yeah. And, and and everyone is so far is is healthy and and uh you know, like of course we've got all these uh, little things that pop up, but uh uh, that that just comes with age, and that's just the thing, right? Yeah, of and, course. Yeah. And all this yeah. technology and all this uh, uh, fangly new stuff that's going on, uh, you know, they're going to make us live forever. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's what that's what it's looking like, right? Uh, exactly. If disease doesn't come through and kill us all at one time, I, I just this COVID thing has just gone on way too long. It's too bad. It's enough yeah. already. Yeah, Stupid. it's enough already. Yeah. Yeah. How did you How did you guys manage to do this? Like to do gigs and come up. Like we uh, didn't. That's why we started doing this. Right, this right. Was, but but, but even gigs. Yeah. even the last gigs that you did. Oh yeah. The last gigs that you did in in, uh, in Western Canada here or whatever is like. Did you not have to uh, quarantine or like no. if you came across you could do that, eh? 
if you're vaccinated and all that kind of stuff, you it, it's sort of uh, you know you got right. you got to, to be vaccinated. You had to be right. vaccinated, and we had to do tests going right. in to Canada. As right, well. going in and going out. Yeah, so and it's, going it's back to the thing. states, we had to do tests as well. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, and it, you know what? It's a whole money maker as well. That's uh, true too, yeah. There, there is. I, I know a lot of people that got rich on on COVID, and and really, uh, sure. Some of the, you know, like if they, you know, just just silly things like buying uh, sanitizer, uh, sure. long, you know, like right at the very beginning, and buying mm -hmm. oodles of it, and mm -hmm. you know, like starting small little businesses, and it just it's been crazy, you know. Yeah, it's been crazy, yeah. and not to mention what the drug companies are. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. Yeah, and yeah. your kids and my grandkids and your kids' kids are going to be paying for this debt for a long time. So, oh, um, of course, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I I didn't mean to bring you down on that. No, I just right. like I, you know, <laughs> I just wish it would. I wish it would. Uh, like yesterday, the border did open, and and it's uh, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was lineups yes. of lineups of campers and everybody wanting to get to Florida. Yeah, and, I bet. You know, it's just I unbelievable. Bet. I yeah. bet. Yeah. Winter's coming. Just well, we've kept you. We've kept you long enough, Kevin. We've got you well, ninety minutes now here, so let's. Yeah. Oh but, my um, god! Oh my god! That's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm. I, everybody seems to be enjoying it. That's the important thing. I'm enjoying okay. it. Okay. I, I, we do this mostly just for selfish reasons because we. Well, listen, it. guys. Listen, sure. I. I. Uh, I'm going to start coming back down uh, to Vegas and et cetera, et cetera. I told Corey that I. Uh, I, I bought myself a. a a diesel pusher bus and i'm just going to drive Whoa. it down there drive it down there and hang out and uh yeah uh, we'll 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 have to make sure that if you guys are around we uh, we get together absolutely awesome. absolutely For that sure. would be a dream come true mm -hmm. well let's uh let's 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 make that happen yeah let's make yeah. that happen uh, i love you guys love uh, you brother and i i love this love format i love what you're doing and yeah carry on Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with Thank everybody. You, brother. With Thanks us, everybody. so much, bud. Thank you, Kevin, and Marlene, and Jimmy D, Thanks and everybody Shelley that listened and Don, and Rob. Yeah, and you, all you, you got a lot yep. of fans. That's great. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, they're only here for Kevin California Finn. That's yeah. right. We yeah. usually only have. Hey, what, yeah. what is Todd Dammit Kearns? Todd Dammit rhymes with God Dammit. That's what. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Is that it? Is that the story? That's the story. Oh, you had to have a nickname like yeah. you. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he he had a dad named Dale, and then his brother was named <laughs> Darren. Well, so he came up. <laughs> the lack of tan. The lack of tan. They were just going to call me Todd Minnesota Kearns. It didn't. Ah. Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> it didn't quite stick. I love it. I love it, guys. Okay, you guys take All care. Right, everybody, stay safe. Yeah. Big love. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks everybody, everybody for joining us. Bye, everyone.